This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Click the link in the description to take advantage of a special offer for Arvin Ash viewers. There are three main ingredients you need to make a universe like ours work. A 4D space time, some particles with certain properties, and some simple rules. From these, you can get a whole host of interactions and a shocking amount of complexity. The kind of complexity we see all around us. What are these rules and what are these interactions that give us everything? And that's coming up right now. Physics is the science that writes the rule book for the universe. Chemistry, biology, geology, and astronomy then use those rules to explain more complex patterns like molecules, cells, mountains, stars, and you. By understanding the rule book, you'll know how all the other games are played. We're going to start at the smallest scales and zoom out, keeping one key idea in mind. Simple rules plus lots of interactions lead to surprising complexity. First, we need a canvas on which to build our universe. That canvas is space-time, which consists of three spatial dimensions and one time dimension. On this canvas, the first toolkit of physics consists of three essential elements, symmetries, conservation laws, and fields. A symmetry is any change of perspective or variables that leaves the outcome of a system unchanged. For example, the laws of physics don't care if you do an experiment in New York or in Beijing. The rules are the same everywhere. This spatial translation symmetry results in conservation of momentum. Similarly, Time translation symmetry means the rules stay the same whether you do the experiment today or next week. This symmetry results in conservation of energy. These connections are formalized in Noether's theorem, and they explain why certain totals never change in isolated systems. These symmetry principles are crucial because respecting or breaking them constrains and predicts the particles and forces we find in nature. I recently made a video on this here if you want to know the details. Regarding fields, at the fundamental level, elementary particles aren't tiny billiard balls. They are excitations or ripples in fields that fill all of space-time. For example, the electromagnetic field is everywhere. Light is a ripple in that field. Particles are best thought of as tiny, quantized excitations of their respective fields. So the electron is a ripple in the electron field. The photon is a ripple in the electromagnetic field, and the up quark is a ripple in the up quark field, and so on. This picture is formalized in quantum field theory, our best framework for how the universe works. You might ask, if everything is really a field, why do particles look like points? The answer is because ripples can be localized, or concentrated in a small region, so they behave like points in many experiments. But the field picture naturally explains interference and creation annihilation processes, which are experimentally proven behaviors of these quantum objects. So the points we see are still waves, but just highly localized waves that appear like points to us in the macro scale. The next tool is the standard model of particle physics, our best tested description of all the non-gravitational forces and the fundamental building blocks of matter that we know of. Quarks combine to make protons and neutrons which make up the nuclei of atoms. Electrons are necessary to make neutral atoms and set their size. They enable chemistry and all the molecular interactions behind life. Gauge bosons carry forces. Photons carry the electromagnetic force, W and Z bosons the weak force, and gluons carry the strong force. The Higgs boson is the quantum ripple of the Higgs field. This field gives mass to fundamental particles like W and Z bosons, quarks, and electrons. Neutrinos also have a tiny mass, the exact origin of which is still under study. I have a detailed video on how the Higgs mechanism results in mass up here if you want to know the details. There are three interactions or forces described in the standard model. First, electromagnetism which acts on electrically charged particles like the quarks and leptons. It has infinite range and is carried by photons. It explains chemistry, electricity, light, and most daily life physics. A second interaction is the strong force. It's responsible for binding the quarks that make up protons and neutrons. It's also responsible for keeping the neutrons and protons bound tightly together in the nucleus of atoms against the tremendous force of their electronic repulsion. 
it can do this because it is at least 100 times stronger than the electromagnetic force at the scale of the nucleus. It's carried by gluons, which confer the strong force via something called the color charge. Quantum chromodynamics, or QCD, is the theory of the strong force. I have a detailed video on it up here if you're interested in learning more about it. Finally, there's the weak force, which allows changing one type of fundamental particle into another. This is how protons can transform into neutrons and vice versa in beta decays. It also initiates the sun's fusion chain. It is short range because it's carried by the relatively heavy W and Z bosons. Heavy mediators imply short range forces. Now, where's gravity in all this? Gravity is described by general relativity. It's not part of the standard model. GR says that gravity isn't a pull, but the result of curved spacetime. Mass and energy tells spacetime how to curve, and curved spacetime tells matter how to move. This is why massless stuff like photons bend around stars and contribute to a system's gravity, and hotter gas weighs more than cold gas because of its added internal energy. Then there is the rule book for the very small, quantum mechanics. Here's a compact summary of what it entails. Superposition before measurement. A quantum particle is described as being in multiple possible states at once. Only a measurement yields a single outcome for its state. What's a measurement? It's an interaction, which is typically an irreversible energy exchange with another particle. Prior to measurement, particles behave like waves of probability. This is why we see interference patterns when we send quantum objects like photons and electrons through slits. For non-relativistic systems, the evolution of the wave function of a quantum system follows the Schrodinger equation. Uncertainty. Certain pairs of properties like position and momentum have a built-in trade-off. Sharper position means fuzzier momentum, and vice versa. This isn't due to bad equipment, it's how nature works. Entanglement. Two or more quantum objects can share a joint state where their properties remain correlated with each other, even across great distances. But this does not mean that there's any faster than light communication or causal connection between the two particles. It just means that certain conserved quantities, like the total energy or the total angular momentum of the system, exists without being localized to either particle. When we measure both particles, we find that the two measurements are correlated and together yield the system's conserved quantity. It's a property of the system as a whole. Then there's decoherence. Here's a simple version of what this means. When a quantum particle, like an electron, interacts with its surroundings, light, air, a detector, information about it leaks out. This ties it or entangles it to its environment. This suppresses interference between the system's possibilities and the system effectively behaves classically. So if you ask, why don't we see quantum weirdness everywhere? It's because of decoherence. It's relentless. Air molecules, photons, and vibrations constantly entangle with macroscopic objects, rapidly selecting stable classical states that many observers can agree on. So large objects have positions. Cats aren't smeared out. And coffee mugs don't usually tunnel through tables. The next concept that needs to be explained in our universe are energy, entropy, and the arrow of time. Energy measures the capacity to do work or create change. It moves and transforms. In isolated systems, it's conserved, meaning it cannot be created or destroyed, only change form. Keep in mind, though, that in general relativity, a simple global energy for the entire expanding universe isn't defined. So this leaves open the possibility that energy may not be conserved for the universe as a whole. You might ask, where did the universe's energy come from? Many cosmologists agree that the total energy can be effectively zero. Positive matter and radiation energy balanced perfectly by negative gravitational energy. There are models of the universe where such a total can be meaningfully defined. Entropy counts how many microscopic arrangements correspond to the same macroscopic state. The second law of thermodynamics says that the total entropy of an isolated system tends to increase. Heat flows from hot to cold because that's the overwhelmingly likely direction. Does increasing entropy mean everything becomes disorderly? Not exactly. 
local order can increase if entropy rises elsewhere. A refrigerator decreases the entropy of the food inside it, but increases the entropy of the room where it is by dumping heat. Earth receives low entropy sunlight and radiates high entropy infrared, enabling complex structures such as life, while the universe's total entropy still increases. Earth by itself is not an isolated system. Entropy and the arrow of time are linked. We go from low entropy to higher entropy states, which is why time seems to have a direction. For example, eggs scramble, but don't unscramble. A video showing an egg becoming unscrambled would be a clear giveaway that we're running this video in reverse. Let's now connect the dots. Ingredients plus rule book plus interactions. So this is how everything works. Space-time provides the stage and is dynamic. It curves and stretches. Fields fill space-time. Particles are quantized ripples. Interactions are dictated by symmetries and conservation laws. Three quantum interactions, electromagnetism, weak and strong, are modeled by the standard model. Gravity is described by general relativity. Quantum mechanics sets the micro rules, superposition, uncertainty, entanglement. Environmental interactions cause decoherence, yielding classical looking macro scales. Thermodynamics and statistical mechanics explain energy flows and the arrow of time. And all this leads to emergence. That is, it builds complexity. Particles making up atoms that make up molecules that lead to cells, which make up brains and brains lead to societies. Same underlying rules, but new behaviors emerge when many parts work together. The same can be said for the many interacting parts of the brain working together to make consciousness. Let's summarize this in one sentence. The universe is a quantum geometric system of fields in a dynamic space-time, governed by symmetries and conservation laws, where interactions and energy flows drive the emergence of everything from atoms to galaxies to life. That's the rule book we know of, and it's good enough to put people on the moon, rovers on Mars, build smartphones, diagnose disease with MRI, and explain why stars shine. Know that many pages of this book are still blank. Dark matter, dark energy, quantum gravity. But these are invitations to you, the next generation of scientists to fill out. And if you want a little help filling out some of those blanks, a great start to your journey would be at Brilliant.org, our sponsor today, where they have a wonderful learning path called science. I love the Brilliant app because it builds foundations in science and math through hands-on problem solving, then guides you through increasingly challenging, in-depth problem solving to reach real learning goals. I find this method to be the most effective whenever I'm trying to learn something new. It's no wonder it has proven to be six times more effective than listening to lectures. You'll develop an intuition for science and scientific thinking through visual, interactive, hands-on problem solving. Brilliant will help you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in not only science, but also math, programming, data analysis, and AI. And you can access this goal-oriented learning right at your fingertips at home or on the go. To learn for free and brilliant, Go to brilliant.org slash Arvin Ash, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Brilliant is also offering Arvin Ash viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. I encourage you to give it a try. And if you want to learn how the universe works mathematically, here's a video I made that explains it in simple terms. I'll see you in the next video, my friend.